This is James Carter, and you're listening to Emergency Insights. Today, we're discussing alcoholic ketoacidosis, commonly referred to as AKA. It's a potentially life-threatening condition that often presents in the emergency department, especially among chronic alcohol users, and it requires careful attention to both diagnosis and management. Let's start with the pathophysiology. AKA is multifactorial in origin. It typically occurs in the setting of chronic alcohol use, combined with prolonged fasting and volume depletion. When glycogen stores are depleted due to starvation, insulin activity decreases while counter-regulatory hormones, primarily glucagon, increase. This hormonal shift promotes lipolysis, releasing free fatty acids from adipose tissue. These fatty acids are then preferentially converted into ketone bodies rather than triglycerides. At the same time, dehydration, common in these patients, leads to reduced renal perfusion and decreased clearings of ketones, further compounding the acidosis. It's worth noting that beta-hydroxybutyrate is the predominant ketone in AKA and standard assays that only detect acetoacetate and acetone can underestimate the true degree of ketonemia. Clinically, patients often present after a bout of binge drinking with little to no food intake for several days. Typically, they show up one to two days after the onset of persistent vomiting. Abdominal pain, often diffuse and epigastric in location, is a common complaint. Physical exam usually reveals signs of dehydration, such as dry mucous membranes and tachycardia, as well as features associated with chronic alcohol use. A fruity odor on the breath due to ketones is often noticeable. These patients may also exhibit symptoms of alcohol withdrawal, including tremors, agitation, or even hallucinations. Diagnostic workup usually reveals a high anion gap metabolic acidosis due to the accumulation of ketone bodies. Interestingly, this is often accompanied by a concurrent metabolic alkalosis from prolonged vomiting and volume loss. Glucose levels in AKA can vary, ranging from low to slightly elevated, which helps differentiate it from diabetic ketoacidosis. Management is centered on reversing the metabolic derangements. Volume resuscitation with D5 normal saline is the cornerstone, addressing both dehydration and carbohydrate deficit. Electrolyte abnormalities should be corrected, especially hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. Thiamine supplementation is critical before administering glucose to prevent precipitating Wernicke's encephalopathy. Finally, don't overlook the broader clinical picture. Many patients with AKA are at high risk for aspiration pneumonia due to vomiting and altered mental status, and comorbid conditions should be promptly evaluated and treated. That wraps up our focus discussion on alcoholic ketoacidosis. Thanks for joining me on Emergency Insights. I'm James Carter. Until next time, stay sharp and stay safe.